Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the West Midlands Police Dog Unit Display. Are you enjoying it so far? I can't hear you, I'm sorry. You've got to try better than that. Have you enjoyed it so far? Good. Well, it's got about to get even better. My name is Sergeant Pete Watson, and I'm the Chief Instructor at the West Midlands Police Dog Unit. And today, we are going to take you on a journey, really. We're going to show you a dog's training life whilst they are with us, both as a pup and as a, a working operational police dog on the streets of Birmingham. OK, we're going to start off with our puppy walkers. As you've previously heard just now, we have about 150 pups in our breed scheme. And you're going to see some of our puppy walkers that we're extremely grateful to for their support. You see Sarah here with police dog Pilgrim. Pilgrim is a 10-week-old German Shepherd dog and is just starting out with us. We then have Louise with police dog Cat. Cat is a six-month-old Dutch Herder dog and is just starting out with us also. And then we have Leslie with police dog Piper. is a 10-month-old English Springer Spaniel. Trish with Bailey, a 10-month-old English Springer Spaniel. In fact, they are actually, these two are litter brothers. And then we have Lisa with police dog Stavros, who's eight weeks old. And James with Elvis, who is a nine-week-old Dutch herder pup. And then the vocal one you see there is Dan with police dog Kenty, who is a 10-month-old German Shepherd dog. And then lastly, David Hibbert, who has police dog Izzy, who is a 10-month-old Dutch herder. Now, all these dogs are from a rather extensive breed scheme. And we, as I say, we are extremely grateful to the puppy walkers for their assistance, without which we wouldn't thrive at all. There we go. OK. Now, obviously, the pups don't remain as cute as they are at the moment for all their life. And we have to move them on and train them and prepare them for what we require from them on the streets as operational police dogs. Now, in the middle, you see Dave there on your, your left and Terry on your right. Both these chaps are our breed scheme managers and work with the puppy walkers to bring on these pups to what we require. What you see now is the pups being enticed into a bark, so teased with the puppy roll, and as they sit into a bark, they're rewarded with the bite and the puppy roll. And then they progress that onto a sit and bark again, as you see there, with a bite pillow, which is delivered downwards towards the dog, and the dog will jump up and engage and bite and have a good full mouth bite, as you see with police dog Izzy there on your right, on your left, rather. There we go. So back to the puppy roll again. Bit more of teasing. We want the dog to bark for it. And there you see is what we call a chase back. So the, the helper, which is Terry here, runs back from the dog, and the dog is released by the handler or the puppy walker and will engage on the toy. And that's exactly what these dogs are biting, are just toys. And then we progress that quite slowly onto a larger bite roll, which the dogs are teased with to begin with to get the bark, and then again are rewarded with the bite. And then that large bite roll is then slipped onto the arm, again repeating the same exercise, the sit and bark, and then the arm is presented with the bite roll for a reward. What I must point out at this stage, ladies and gentlemen, is don't try this at home. Okay, we train these dogs with experienced police dog instructors and handlers who understand the dog's temperament and know how to get and harness the best out of the dog's drive to achieve this exercise. There we go, chase back again. A nice bite, I'll just move out the way before my legs are taken away from me. There we go. As you can see, these dogs are extremely highly driven and come on to the helper at quite a pace. There we go. Police dog Izzy 
and Police Dog Kenty. As you can appreciate, these dogs are still quite young, they're only 10 months old, and these are what we call our pre-course dogs. What you're about to see now are our course dogs. These two dogs are presently on courses. On your left you have police dog Ice, which again is a 10-month-old Dutch herder, which is the little sister to police dog Izzy, you've just seen working, been watched earlier. And police dog Stick with uh, PC Paul Van Veen. Again, the dogs are going to be enticed into a bark, but these dogs are a bit more advanced with the work that's been put into them. And then we're going to move on to what we call the Schutzen sleeve, which is a larger sleeve, which has a nice big bite bar in the middle of it. And these dogs, and as you can understand, this again is just a big toy that the dogs are being progressed onto. And again, the dogs will sit and bark, nice and controlled. Police dog stick there, there we go, and for a nice full mouth bite. There we go. We want the dogs to have a fixed bite on the sleeve there, so that they don't move around the sleeve. And the reason we do this is to ensure that if, if we do have to deploy the dog to detain a running offender, that the dog makes one bite and the injury that may be caused is minimal, with one firm bite. There we go. Well done. It's police dog ice and police dog stick here. The reason... The reason we throw the dogs around like that is to ensure that, just to show to you, display to you how firm that bite is, how firm and fixed the bite is. There we go, a bit of a straight chase here, or a chase back, there we go. Police dog ice is going to chase this stick across the ground at a tremendous pace, a nice firm bite, and then back to the handler. Okay, moving this exercise on a bit now, what you're going to see is what we call a stick attack on the dog. This is testing the dog's courage. Now what the sticks that you see there are what we call soft, slappy sticks, they're quite padded sticks. You'll see Dave and Terry are hitting themselves with a the stick. The dog will be sent through the stick, the stick will be waved above the dog's head and slapped either side of the dog and the dog will maintain that firm grip the dog is in no discomfort whatsoever, but we're just building the pressure on the dog to ensure and to prepare that dog for life as a working police dog in the streets of Birmingham. Thank you, Police Dog Ice with PC Paul House and Police Dog Stick with PC Paul Van V. Okay, that's the general purpose dogs. We will revisit them before the end of the demonstration. What we're going to move on to now is some of our specialist search dogs. We have on your right, police dog Noddy, with PC Neil Chennington. And on the other side here is police dog Heath and his handler, PC Keith Bennett. They haven't done anything yet. Okay, what are you going to see? What you're seeing set up here now is uh, just articles for the dogs to search around to find a controlled substance. These dogs are our proactive drugs dogs. Now we call them drugs dogs, it's a bit misleading really because they also search for cash and firearms. Now these dogs are going to work their way up the side of the arena now, searching for a hide which is actually going to be a component part of a firearm. And they will give a nice passive, I say will, give a nice passive indication whereby the dog will freeze by the height when they identify the scent of the article and not interfere with it in any way. There we go, police dog Heath and police dog Noddy. Well done guys. The handlers... Again, this is all toy reward driven, so the dogs will freeze there until they hear a click from the handler and they'll come back to the handler for their toy reward. Okay, moving that on now, the dogs and handlers are going to move up to the either end of the cones, and the dogs will start to search the cones. Now, it's, 
If you ever look very closely how these dogs work, they will examine every single inch of these cones. They don't miss a, a, a tiny inch of it at all. Look at them. There's Heath working away around the base, Noddy around the top there, both working into the middle. And when they get to the middle with the suitcase, again, this will just highlight how they search around every single inch of that suitcase looking for a potential hide. There we go, moving on. These dogs are well balanced because you can see they're working together as a team. Onto the hide again. A nice passive indication. Lead is dropped. He's not going to leave that hide until he hears the click. And a ball reward. There you go. Lovely. <laughs> Police dog, Heath, PC Keith Bennett and police dog Noddy and PC Neil Chennington. Thank you, chaps. OK, we're just going to move these cones out of the way now. And what we're going to move on to now is still a drugs dog, but it's what we call a passive scanning dog. And the difference between this dog and the other two you've just seen, this is PC Russ Martin and police dog Jasper. Jasper is a four-year-old English Springer Spaniel, again from our breed scheme. Now he's a passive scanning dog, and what he does is he scans the air around people. And this is quite a skillful area for dogs, because the dog must not interfere or touch the helpers. We're just going to get some volunteers out from the crowd there, for our passive crowd. So if you want to come out, stick your hand up, and Julie there will bring you out and stand you all on the line. That's lovely. We've got a little goodie bag, if, you're a little bit, if you need a bit more persuasion to come out. That's lovely. Well done. Now what we're going to do, we're going to get these volunteers to stand in a straight line. And in the middle, we will have someone carrying a bag of sorts. And in that bag, there may or may not be a controlled substance. And what you'll see is you'll see Jasper working his way around people, not engaging with them in any way, just scanning the air around them. being worked by Russ there. He makes sure that Jasper doesn't miss anybody or any potential hides. He's watching the dog and again, we'll get a nice passive indication on the helper. There we go, well done. <laughs> okay, we're going to move this on a little bit now and we're gonna have, instead of a line, we're going to have a staggered crowd, so just mingling around in a shopping precinct, say, or even a pub. People obviously go to the pub earlier than I used to go when I started. There we go. So imagine this is uh, a pub and the dog is walking around, scanning people, looking for that scent that he can identify. And when he does, he does a bit of a, what we call a chase back, so he won't leave that hide, gets his reward, and the police can deal with that suspect. Well done. That's the passive scanning. There we go, they're gonna get the lucky bags now. Lots of E numbers, sweets, and all sorts of nice things here. Fizzy drinks, that's great, that is. Thanks, parents, you'll enjoy those later. <laughs> okay. Now, you've seen some of the GP dogs when they're very young. What are you going to... Oh, what's going on now? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, there was no need for... Watch out for these two. Keep your eyes peeled. Some of the older members of the audience might remember that. OK, we might see them later. That's not very nice, was it? What I'm going to show to you now is a police dog, Izzy, and Dave Hibbert, one of our puppy walkers, is going to use his dog there to find a bit of property. Now, I'm going to throw these articles out over that side and another article out over that side. Now, what the dog is searching for is articles that have fresh human scent on them, which may have been stolen from a burglary or a housebreak. And we can use the dogs to find these articles near to, you know, these target premises. What, the, what we can get of these articles, here, there she goes, a nice passive indication again. She's waiting for her toy. 
and she will not leave that article until our handler gets near. Well done. There we go. There's one more article to find. It's important that these dogs don't interfere with these articles in any way because with the advances of science and technology nowadays, we can get DNA, and I'm sure you've all heard of that, off these articles, which may belong to an offender who's carried out the burglary or the housebreak. There she goes again. She's busy working away. She's checking for that scent. It's not just human scent. Obviously, these articles are alien. The scent on these articles is alien to the background scent of the ground that it's lying on. There she goes. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be worth a clap. There she comes, gets a reward. That's Dave Hibbert and police dog Izzy. Thank you, Dave. Okay, now you've seen puppy dogs, you've seen pre-course dogs, you've seen course dogs. What we're going to show you now is PC Sue Cheek and police dog King. They are an operational dog team on, working in the streets of Birmingham. And this we're going to show you, and our instructor, PC Bob Butler. What we're going to show you now is a series of exercises that our dog teams have to re-license through it every year, once every 12 months. And we're going to start off with a straight chase exercise. I'm just going to move out of the way. Okay, Bob's going to run off, fleeing criminal. Sue's going to challenge. He's not going to stop. The dog is deployed. I'm going to engage with the running man, bringing him to justice. There we go. Sue will move swiftly up to the dog, ask the helper to stand still, and the dog will be recalled into a down position. Well done. Oh, dearie me. Attack and handler that was. And what that is displaying is that the dog must remain in the down unless there's obviously a threat to the handler, i.e. an attacking handler, and the dog will break without any further instruction and come to the aid of the handler. Now, what we're displaying again here is the control with the dog, whilst PC Su Cheek there searches the offender, recalls the dog past the offender, so make sure the dog is under control and is not going to engage with the sleeves. And then a little bit of an escort. Well done. OK, moving that on now. What we have is the standout exercise. So very similar. You've seen Bob run off. He's been given a warning to stand still. He hasn't. This time he is going to stand still. And the dog will stand out and not engage with him in any way, apart from sitting and barking. Well done. It's going to detain him there. You wouldn't want to run off from that dog now, would you? And then he's going to be recalled to the handler. Well done. <laughs> Sue will now approach the offender. Bit of a chat. Walk back to the dog. Again, displaying the control with the dog. He's not going to break. Although he's still focused on Bob. OK, moving that on now, what we're going to display to you now is, is stop exercise. Now, you can imagine, again, Bob's going to run off. Now, something could happen that Sue, that's going to want Sue to get the dog back to her as quickly as possible without continuing with that chase. So I'll just move out of the way again. <laughs> and Sue's going to stop the dog and recall him. Excellent, there we go. Right, lastly, what we're going to show you here with this little bit of the demonstration is the stick attack. Like you've seen with the pups, there's going to be a lot of, he's going to advance menacingly towards the dog, shouting and screaming, waving the weapon, testing the dog's courage. The dog wants to get after him. Dog sent, engages with the helper. Slappy stick is used. He's going to be disarmed. There we go. Secured by the police officer and the dog will be called off. There we go. 
Well done. These are what we call high drive exercises. So it's really important that we ensure that these exercises are carried out whilst the dog is under perfect control, which you've seen here this afternoon with Police Dog King and PC Sue Cheek. Thank you, Bob. Now, we had a little bit of an incident out here earlier, if you recall. If you see anybody, can you point them out to me or shout? Come on, I can't hear you. Where? Oh, no. Oh, no. Don't speak to me like that. That's shocking. I'm offended. What you're about to see here, ladies and gentlemen, is our firearm support dogs. You're going to see police dog Scar with PC Keith Bennett. And he's going to deploy Scar in partnership with the two firearms officers you see in, this, in the uh, arena here. And they're going to deal with this rather mischievous criminal using the, most, the minimal amount of force required. Police dog Scar will be deployed on a long line. He will detain the offender. And without putting anyone else on offer, in danger, the dog will retrieve, under control, the offender back into cover. The dog will release and the offender will be arrested. Well done. Right, we're just going to have a little break here and show you a little bit of close control work. So the bite suit jacket that you see our breed scheme manager Dave Raymond, aka Mr Angry, you'll find out shortly why. This bite suit is just a big toy for the dog, all right? It's a big reward. He's just going to walk around. He's going to show. Now, if you look at Scar's body language, is he looking unhappy? Is he looking comfortable? Is he, is he happy? His tail's wagging away, isn't it? There we go. So he's not engaging with that toy in any way. Keith's going to put Scar in several different positions. Notice that Keith is, work, is working the dog a good distance away from himself. So he trusts the animal. And in a minute he'll drop off and go into a sit and bark. There we go. Nice and controlled. Dave's making lots of agitation moves there, which would bring on dogs in perhaps. But because Sky is well controlled and well trained, He's nice and relaxed. He's not engaging with the bite suit in any way. And he's rewarded with a bite on the bite suit. Well done. Okay. Police Dog Scar and PC Keith Bennett and Mr. Angry. Okay, just to finish off now, we're going to do, you're going to see one more firearm support dog, PC Neil Chenton and Police Dog Ty. We're going to have somebody else who's going to come out in a minute. If you see them, please let me know. I think you should just sit down. I think you should just sit down. Well, you are, aren't you? Well, you work for me, so you must be a loser. Okay, so Terry's going to sit in his chair there. Now, this is a passive attack dog, as we call it. You'll notice that David earlier was moving around, lots of challenging and shouting, brings the dog in. What we're going to show to you now is police dog Ty, with his handler Neil Cherrington, is going to deploy the dog against someone who's giving the dog nothing. 
He's just going to sit perfectly still. But then you've got an armed man there. He's, he's very close to that firearm. You can turn that firearm on the police officers very quickly, and he needs to be dealt with. So this is a passive attack dog. Again, not putting anyone else in any danger. You can't see the dog coming. Bang. There we go. The dog will retrieve the offender all the way back. Now look at that dog work now. He's digging in. He's pulling him back into cover. Well done. Police dog tie and PC Neil Chennington. Thank you, Terry. Okay, just to finish off, very quickly, we're going to finish with something a bit of fun. Mr. Angry is going to come out again into the ring and we're going to do what we call a double dog attack. Now, this is not something we do operationally. It's purely a bit of fun for the dogs. But again, it's going to highlight quite clearly the control these dogs have with their handlers. I was going to say the control the dogs have over their handlers. Here we go. It's not right. Go on, hiss back to them. Tell them. It's not right. It's shocking behavior. Mr. Angry, please. Please. There we go. Dogs are going. In they come. Double dog. Now watch, Dave's going to spin round now. The dogs are going to be called off to release across, across each other back to the handlers. There we go. Well done. Thank you very much. That's police dog Scott and PC Keith Bennett. Police dog Ty and PC Neil Cherrington. Okay, that's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed it.